Very good afternoon to all of my friends out there. Several interesting things to speak about. There's some things they've placed out there, so let's take a look at them. Global warming is a debatable subject. You can't blame it all on man. Well, they had a nice little article here talking about the sea rise potential of more than three feet within the next 88 years. And we'll scan down here and highlight some of the things they've said. They're talking about the melting glaciers in Greenland and Antarctica. It could push the level up more than three feet by the end of the century. And it would displace millions of people from your low-lying areas, like a, what they named Bangladesh. And coastal megacities from New York to Tokyo would have to plan ahead and spend billions of dollars for putting together some seawalls and other types of infrastructure to hold the tides back. Jonathan Bamber, who's a glaciologist, is saying about the consequences are horrible. And yeah, when something goes up, other things go down. So there would be some island places and whatnot that would eventually sink. You have your post-glacial rebound effects. Trying to estimate, or guesstimate, how much the level would rise from the melting is kind of a kind of like playing darts and trying to hit the bullseye, I think, to to get an actual on the money figure. And some of the evidence suggests that the recent quickening in the melting is related to ocean and atmospheric temperature and natural variability may play an important role. And the glaciers, they say, respond to external forces such as warmer temperatures, tremendous uncertainty over how it will affect sea levels. Though they're not sure, you probably have some differencing of opinion in the scientific community. And they sent 26 of the leading glaciologists with a series of questions about the Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets. Half, about half replied two years ago. And they were polled again recently in 2012. The median guesstimate from the experts is that it will contribute one foot within 88 years and a small 5% chance it could exceed 2.8 feet. And then you get your thermal expansion kicked into there and the high end would be a 3 feet guesstimate. And these, these are higher evidently than the 2007 report. And well, I bet Al Gore is really going to like this report, huh? And this discrepancy reflects weight given to the studies that indicate the melt is accelerated and that the West Antarctic ice sheet would partially collapse. The greatest drama would be more than three foot rise with the combined effect of the melting and thermal expansion which has a one in twenty according to them chance of happening. How much this can be attributed to the human burning of the fossil fuels remains murky. You, see, you can't blame it all on us. No consensus among the experts. But it's a subject needs to be addressed and you need to be conscious that it is happening. My personal opinion is 
that it's happening, I don't think there's much we can do about it. I think it would take a long, long time. Even if we quit driving cars and motorcycles and airplanes and shut all the factories down and everything. But that's just my opinion. Once, once this event has began, I don't see it being able to be stopped. But there's other parts where there's new glaciers forming too at the same time. Now, we'll go into Obamacare. Had a nice little interesting article here. Obamacare was good for everyone. We were supposed to clap our hands and say kumbaya and things were going to be a glorious day, weren't they? But you scan this article and it talks about double digit increases in premiums for some customers, particularly vulnerable, uh, excuse me, vulnerable to the high rates are the small business people and the ones who do not have their insurance paid by their employer and they buy it on their own. In the great state of the soon to be bankrupt unless they're bailed out by the American taxpayer, California the super liberal, uber liberal state, Aetna is pr proposing a rate increase of 22%, Anthem Blue Cross 26%, Blue Shield 20%. The rate requests are all the more striking after a 39% rise sought by Anthem Blue Cross in 2010. That's what they sought. Florida and Ohio may have been able to raise the rates by at least 20% on some policyholders. Several hundred dollars a month can amount to. These proposed increases compare with about 4% for families with employer-based policies. So if your employer raises the rates takes more out of your check combined with the Social Security tax that went up 2% you now have less of a check and Mr. Obama said that things were getting better let's see the review reveals a sharp disparity the striking difference between like New York New York recently used the sweeping powers to hold rate increases to the individual. Small group markets under 10%. California can review rate requests for technical errors but cannot deny the rate increase. Hmm. These double digit requests are being made despite the evidence that overall health care costs appear to have slowed. Increasing in the single digits annually as many people put off treatment because of the weak economy. And the back that hurts you stays hurting, the knee that bothers you, you still get bothered by, etc. You put it off. Eh, Price Waterhouse Coopers estimates the cost may increase just seven and a half percent next year. Well below the rate increase sought. Medical costs for some holders are rising faster than the average. Federal regulators contend that the premiums will be higher still without the law, or they would be, which sets limits on profits and administrative costs and provides for rebates if the insurers exceed those limits. Let's see. The California insurers say they have no choice but to raise premiums if their underlying medical costs have increased. We need these rates to even come reasonably close to covering the expense of this population. This, the insurers requesting a range of increase with, which average about 12% for 2013. Let's see. Federal officials say the laws resulted in significant savings. 
the health care law includes new tools to hold insurers accountable for premium hikes and give rebates to consumers. The insurance have already paid $1.1 billion in rebates and rate review programs have helped save the consumer an additional $1 billion in lower premiums. While insurers in New York on average requested 9.5% increase for individual policies, they were granted an increase of just 4.5%. In the small group market, insurers asked for an increase of 15.8% but received approvals averaging only 9.6%. Many people elsewhere experienced significant jumps in what they have to pay. 36% of the requests to raise rates by 10% or more were found to be reasonable. The insurers withdrew 12% of those requests. 26% were modified and another 26% were found to be unreasonable. Some consumer advocates and policy experts say the insurers may be increasing rates for fear of charging too little. They may be less afraid of having to refund some of the money than risk losing the money. Well, well, well. Obamacare is on the loose and it's not even 2014 whenever it really, really ramps into high gear. And we'll switch over here to the soon to be, if confirmed, Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel. I don't trust this guy. If Obama likes him, red flag. Well, we go down here and look into his business career. Watch Chuck's business career. After he left the government, he co-founded Vanguard Cellular, a mobile phone service, made him a multi-millionaire. So he's he's in the club. He got a bunch of money, and while he worked there, he served as president, chief executive officer of the United States Organization in the Private Sector Council, as deputy director and chief operating officer of the 1990 G7 summit. And on the board of directors or advisory committee of the American Red Cross, the Eisenhower World Affairs Institute, Bread for the World, and the Ripon Society. He also served as chairman of the Agent Orange Settlement Fund as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. There's that. You just can't get away from all these people that are in that, huh? He was pressured by some to run for governor of Virginia, where he lived for 20 years. But in 92, Chuck moved back to Nebraska to become president of the McCarthy Group. Oh, a swell investment banking firm. He also served as chairman and CEO of American Information Systems, which is a voting machine manufacturer. Hmm. In 1992, as president of investment group McCarthy & Company, he assumed ownership and became chairman of American Information Services, later known as Election Systems and Software, a manufacturer of computerized voting machines. On March the 15th, 1995, he resigned from the board of AIS as he intended to run for office. Michael McCarthy parent company's founder was Hagel's campaign treasurer and at least until 2003 he retained between a million and five million in stock in election system and software's parent company the McCarthy Group. So there you have it. <clears throat> if electronic voting machines can be rigged and or tampered with to affect elections you got Chuck Hagel. Yeah! I don't trust him, like I said. Well, y'all can make your own opinions. But I thought I'd bring that to light, how he was involved in electronic voting machines. I don't think that's quite public information. God bless, and I'll speak to y'all soon.